So finally, that then raises a huge issue about who you're leading. At the moment, I would guess you're a senior management team, you know who you're leading. You're leading your staff. They're in your departments. In this world, you're trying to lead all sorts of people who are out there, partners, peers, social movements, charities, NGOs, private sector. You're trying to orchestrate a kind of coalition more than lead a department. How do you lead them? Why might they move? How do you hold them to account? What skills do you need to lead that kind of change? They're different from running a well-functioning, well-oiled department. They're a different set of skills. So just find final way of, of thinking about it. I have this incredibly checkered career. I was in newspapers for a long time. I was in newspapers for about 12 years. And I got to uh, the 18th floor of Canary Wharf um, before it became the throbbing, buzzing, vibrant place that your leader described earlier. Uh, because when I worked there, the only shop was the post office. Uh, and I arrived there as, I had one of these jobs, I was called something like Deputy Executive Assistant Editor of The Independent. Um, and you will know, if any of you have ever had a title like that, that meant I was in charge of chairs. Because the more senior my job got, and the swankier the title, the more boring it got. And the more boring my job got, the more boring I got. Because all the people working for me went out and did things which I came into journalism to do. They went out to interview people or research stories or write them, whilst I was locked in budget meetings with accountants, poring over editorial budgets and how to cut them. And I used to get into, the morning, uh, get into work at, uh, in the morning. I worked at 60, 60, between 60 and 70 hours a week. Um, would see my kids, if I was lucky, for 10 minutes a day. I'd get into my office every morning, and every morning I would find the same thing, which is I'd find this huge, great rock in my office. Heavy, covered in moss, damp. I would sit having my coffee uh, and look at this rock. It just would never go away. And eventually, I'd think, no one else is going to move this rock. I'm going to have to get up and move it. And of course, the rock was the organization. The rock was who's doing the news list, and how can we prepare for this, and who's doing the promotion on the front page, and has someone had this discussion with so-and-so about moving jobs, and so on and so forth, it was the rock. And so the only way to get a rock from point A to point B is you have to pick it up and you have to throw it. It's a propulsion strategy. And that's what it felt like being a manager. Now, if you are not in that business, that's fantastically good news, but for a lot of people managing, that is what leadership feels like. I'm going to have to pick this rock up because no one else will. And you know what? If you treat an organization like a rock, it will behave like a rock. It will refuse to move unless you move it. So now imagine that your task is to get a bird from point A to point B. Well, if you spent too much time with the wrong management consultants, you will know the answer is you pick the bird up, you strap its wings up, you attach a rock to the bottom, and then you throw it. So now imagine that you've got to get a flock of birds. And the flock are your staff, your politicians, your suppliers, your regulators, your partners in the community. There's a whole flock. How do you get them from point A to point B? The only way to do that is to put bird seed and water at point B. You have to attract them. You cannot propel them. So the more that you move into this world, the more that you're going to have to lead through attraction, not propulsion. Through motivation, not instruction. And that will require different, more political, more motivational, more colloquial kind of forms of leadership. But the fact that you are in a position to even consider this as a challenge is a real testimony to where you're at. Because I go around the country and there are so many local authorities and public organizations who would love to be in the position that you're in to be even contemplating thinking about this challenge. Because they are so far back in the journey that you've been on in getting basic services right. So that you've got this challenge uh, is a huge testimony to what you've done. 
if you can really make an impact on it, you will be ahead of the curve in the creation of next generation public services. So I wish you well.